Okay, uh, we can start with introductions. Um, I'll start. My name is Katie Shavarati. I'm the Education Abroad Outreach Specialist. Um, I mainly deal with our um, UW Platteville Education Abroad programs and our affiliate partner programs. Um, but this is our short term faculty led session, so I'll let me take over. Hi, uh, my name is Neve. I'm the program coordinator for Education Abroad. So I oversee all the short term faculty led uh, study abroad programs here at UW Platteville. So all faculty members who are interested in leading a program, taking students overseas, they will come and we'll have that discussion and then they'll work with me and we'll work with all the, the planning stuff. And if you have questions about that, you can definitely refer them to me. And then we have two lovely faculty members who are here who will be discussing about short-term faculty, their short-term faculty experience as well too. So I'll leave it up to Jen and John. Righty, thank you, me. Um, hi everybody. I, as Katie said, I'm really excited um, that we have so much interest in short-term uh, faculty-led study abroad. Um, the way that I set this up uh, and John and I set this up, we thought we were trying to think about ways to like do a presentation. And I think like you guys have maybe heard like you know, the how to, et cetera. But we've decided that because we're all kind of landlocked a little bit right now, it might be fun to just take a virtual version of our study abroad that we've done before. Um, and so that is what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep the chat open. So please, if you have any questions along the way, throw them in the chat or we're a small enough group. Well, we're getting to be a bigger group, but um, if you do wanna, stop and unmute yourself and ask a question that's pertinent to something along the way, feel free to do that as well. John and I are pretty easygoing. So I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, one second. And we, off we will go. Okay, give me a thumbs up. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Can you see that? We good? Awesome. Yep. Okay, so today our journey is going to be um, off to the UK. So this is actually the site that we stay in when we go to the UK. This is Harlexton Manor and it's in Grantham, England, which is about um, an hour north of London. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that. But our hosts would be me. I'm Dr. Jen Collins. I'm the director of the School of Education. And for purposes of this journey today, um, you would be taking this class as part of our teacher training and educational approaches abroad course, which is our teaching 3630 course. Um, it is one of our uh, electives currently. John? I am Dr. John Peterson from biology. If you got here earlier, you know that I am a snake expert. Amphibians and reptiles are what I love. I also teach anatomy and physiology, so I do some human things as well. Um, and I've made a course called People and Natural Environments of the UK to coincide at the same time as when Jen is taking students over. And um, besides being in biology, I also have reassignment that I work with other professors on campus, specifically the new instructors, so, and help them get up to speed. So that's me. That's him. Um, yeah, and I've been doing study abroad now for about 10 years. I was kind of like whining, like first world probably a little bit earlier because it was the first time in 10 years I haven't had the opportunity to take students overseas um, coming up this summer. So that's kind of a bummer for us, but um, you know what? It is what it is. We'll be back to normal soon. So uh, just a reminder, um, this is what we're going to plan on doing today is take a virtual study abroad and walk through. So even though this is based on my education and teaching course and John's biology course, I want you to just try and approach it, even if you're thinking, but I'm an engineer, or I'm in industrial studies, or I'm in business, you know, this doesn't really relate to me. It's just to give you a feel for what an experience could feel like and the things that you would kind of do on one of these. So, all right, so let's get started. So one of the first things you probably will do, and I've, we've, we've already been looking in the discussion board and some questions about short-term faculty-led, is how would I even know which, um, where I could go or what courses I could take? And that's pretty easy to find. So if you just go on the education abroad side, I've done some screenshots here. And on the left-hand side, there's a program button. Um, I guess I should go back just a little bit. Short-term faculty-leds are, usually between 10 days and two weeks. So they are different from those semester longs. They usually take place within the summer, although there are some that are in the in winterum. And then 
me, are there any over spring break or is it, are we just summer and winter? Uh, we do have one, generally one program for spring break. Okay, so there is that option as well, okay? Um, and what I love about short-term faculty leds is that what I say to my, my teachers a lot of the time is if you can't really afford to be gone, financially or otherwise for an entire semester, but you still have a real desire um, to go overseas and do some adventuring and exploring and broadening your horizons. It's a great way to go over and kind of dip your toe into traveling. Um, if you haven't done a lot of traveling, it's a great way to have an experience where you get guided by some faculty. Um, they can help you show you the ropes about how to traveling. And one of our big goals overarching is not only just the content, but we also want you to develop a lifelong love of travel um, and build some confidence and some skills in doing that on your own. Okay. So, so I can add something to that, yeah, Jen. Please do. Um, when you guys get out of school on the other side, you need three people to take in your back pocket with you to give you recommendations on the other side. And so doing a trip like this gives you access to some professors so that they can get to know you on more of a personal level than if you just took a course with a regular course with someone. So keep that in mind. The other thing is, you know, we're talking about our course, but really you need 3000 level courses and even I've been on Jen's version of the class and any student should take that class. The, even the education parts are so interesting. And so I wouldn't shy away from programs just because it doesn't fit like super well with your major. And honestly, I should say this, Katie or Nee, right now, I can't see the chat because the way this is set up. So if there's anything in there that you wanna jump in that applies currently, or if we wanna just save them to the end, I'm okay either way, okay? Right now they just have names and emails. I have them put in there, so. Okay, okay. Yep. All right, so back to, to here. So now you are an interested student and you're thinking, I wanna go somewhere. I don't know what my options are. Where can I go? You're gonna head over to the Education Abroad page. You're gonna click on programs. Um, and then there is a short-term faculty led button. And from there that you're gonna push in here. And as you can see on here, it lists all of the experiences um, that are available for you. So for example, here's one British theater and English period. Okay, that one's in London and you'll click on that and that will give you the additional information. Okay, here's ours, oops. There's ours, uh, the second one. Um, John and I, and then there's another one down there that's an ag one. Um, depending on what program you are, if you want to do something that's actually within your content area, there's a pretty good chance that there will be an option for that. But as also as John said, um, no experience is going to be a bad experience, you know, anything you can do that's a little bit interesting or outside your, I guess, content interests or whatever, it'll be beneficial. So that's where the list is, okay? Um, and then you're going to have to sit and think about making a choice. So John, feel free to jump in if you have other things on here. I was just trying to like brain drain as to what I always tell the students, but you're going to look through. I'm going to beg of you, contact the faculty that are in charge of the program or programs you're interested. They want to hear from you. They're not going to think, oh, that's, that's a dumb question, or why are they bothering me, or why are they asking? If you have an interest in any of the experiences, get a hold of the faculty member that's listed and ask a lot of questions. Um, and you might be thinking, I don't even know what questions to ask. Okay, so we have some listed here. You know, you're gonna wanna know what the itinerary looks like. What does the syllabus look like? Um, what are the assignments? You know, are you gonna have to write a paper? Are you gonna have to put together a movie? Are you gonna be reading books and doing a lot of work when you're on site? Are you doing most of that before? Are you doing things afterwards? You know, looking at the itinerary and reminding yourself, my friends, that this is a course that you're going with other people. It's not your independent vacation. So you've got to also be thinking to yourself, okay, I'm going to, I want to, I want to do this. Let me look at the itinerary. Let me see if there's enough free time. Maybe you're a person who wants a lot of free time. Maybe you don't want to have a lot of unstructured free time. Looking at the itinerary will be important for you in making those choices as well. Um, what are, like I said, what are those pre-departure and re-entry expectations? Are there three meetings that you need to attend in advance of departure? Are there assignments that are due afterwards? Maybe that'll make a difference to you. Um, I know a big one for everybody is the cost. And I know there were some questions earlier about what can I expect a cost to be and me, feel free to jump in. Ours, I think normally runs 
around $3,000, um, around, and that's everything included, but me, do you want to speak to like just the variety of prices for all of them? Yeah, generally, uh, for prices, we like prices to be, uh, for students, because we always think about students and student costs, we like price to be probably around $4,000. However, there are some special excursions that generally go to different places. A great example is the, the Galapagos Island. Um, for a program like that, you're looking closer to about $5,500, but again, it's the Galapagos Island. So if there's any um, different places that are a little more off the map, um, like Galapagos, then you'll see a higher cost than that. But again, that's a very, that's a place where everyone would like to go. So it's on a bucket list type. So the, of course, flight is probably be the most expensive for that. But generally we like to keep our courses about under, under $4,000 for students. Thank you. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in the back of your mind is what is included and what is the out of pocket cost? So when I say that our trip is around 3,300 for us, that included everything. That was airfare, that was housing, that was almost all of your meals. It was the excursions we took, everything was packaged together. So that was the final price. There were some out of pocket expenses like paying for your passport, or there were a couple meals when we were in Edinburgh that you had to pay out of your pocket because they weren't included as part of being in the hotel or whatever. So you're gonna wanna keep in mind, yeah, I am paying this, this kind of bigger chunk of money um, for the for the overall program, but I'm also going to want to have money in my pocket for shopping as well as a few extra meals, et cetera, et cetera. There are scholarships available through uh, Education Abroad. Um, School of Ed also has some scholarship money where we decrease the cost in, you know, for students as well. So you're going to want to look at that. Um, yeah, I guess that's what I have to say about cost. Um, Make sure you know what the deadlines are. When do you need to apply? When, when does your application have to be in to be considered? Um, is there course credit in, involved? As John had said earlier, 3000 level courses, you know, some of you need to be taking those. So you wanna know if that's gonna count. Is it gonna count within your major? Is it just an elective? Is it meeting one of your general ed outcomes? Um, taking those into consideration for students um, can be um, important as well so and also i see this free time versus the course time do you have a course that are you taking um being part of an experience that maybe has a lot of on the ground study time or are you getting most of that done outside or outside of the actual trip and experience on site for us a lot of our work gets done beforehand because john and i both believe like the experience in and of itself is like the best teacher so we don't want to bog you down with a lot of sitting in classrooms you can sit in a classroom here we don't want you sitting in the classroom when you're abroad. So anything, John, you want to add to that? that I... Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. All right. Oh, oh one actual yeah. thing is contacting yeah. the professor because you're going to spend a lot of time with this person. And so personality is a big part of this. And so make sure you're OK with the person that you're going to travel with. That is a really good point because it's for some folks, it's an intense experience, right? It's kind of stressful and you want to make sure that you're jiving with the person with, you know, that you're going to be traveling with, you know, so. Okay, so now you've made your decision. You've decided, oh my gosh, I, I cannot wait. I've met John and Jen and they are amazing human beings and they're going to go, and I've always wanted to go to the UK. I'm not really sure if education's my thing, but I heard there's some biology stuff and that sounds cool. I think I'll sign up for that, okay? Most of the courses will have what's called a pre-departure meeting. So you're taking part of our pre-departure meeting. Um, and that's where we will gather everybody together. Uh, and if we're going in the summer, which we normally go, this would take place in, I think, what do we do, John? Maybe February, March, pull everybody mm -hmm. together. Um, it's a time for us to share the syllabus and make sure you understand specifically uh, what course you're going to be taking and what the expectations are. You'll get to meet the other people that are going with you, right? And so some of these might be friends of yours. Some of them might be complete strangers, right? So we want to give you an opportunity to meet the people that are going because once again, you'll be spending about two weeks with them and spending a lot of time together. So we want, and not that you have to love everybody on the experience that you go with, but it's also really important that you know who those folks are, right? Uh, we share packing lists. 
travel details. We have a big PowerPoint where we walk through everything, like how to exchange money. What do I do if I want to make a phone call overseas? What do I do with my credit cards? How much uh, shopping money should I take? What kind of clothes should I bring? Can I wash my clothes overseas? What about adapters for electricity? What does that look like? So we answer all those kind of how much luggage should I bring, et cetera. So we make sure that we have an opportunity to sit down with all you guys and um, answer all those kind of questions you have so you feel comfortable. All right, John, you good? Yeah, thumbs up, okay. So we've had our pre-departure meeting and now we've told everybody and I will tell you what we tell for our folks as well as we meet at the airport, okay? We fly in and out of O'Hare just because price-wise it is uh, the least expensive, um, uh, avenue for us to travel. Okay. And so we meet everybody at the airport. So here we are Sunday, July 7th, everybody, we've got our luggage, your parents have come and dropped you off or your friends or you've taken the bus. One cool thing about going to O'Hare is you can catch the Van Gelder bus in Madison or in Rockford. And for, oh, do you guys know, I think it's, it's under 40 bucks, I think maybe 40 bucks round trip. You can just hop on the bus there. They drop you right off in the airport in O'Hare. Um, if your family doesn't like driving in the city and stuff, which I know some folks don't. And so you can get dropped right off at the airport, meet us upstairs, and then we can turn around and then come back. Uh, you hop on the bus after we get back, it'll take you back to where you were. So if you don't want to drive in. So we all convene in the airport uh, <clears throat> and we all check in together because we're on a group flight. Um, and so then we had, we usually have students come prepare to go a little bit early. If you have traveled before, I know some of you, this would be your first airplane ride. We've had that before as well. So if it is, um, usually with international flights, uh, we need to be there at least two to three hours beforehand so we can get everybody checked in. So that gives us time not to stress about getting everybody's bags checked getting through security, and then we have some time to kind of run around the airport a little bit before we leave, okay? And we, so we saw John, John C. Riley at the airport, which was, I, we can't always guarantee star spottings, but <laughs> it was perfectly great. Yep, he had a fancy hat on, remember? He had that little pork pie <laughs> hat on. <laughs> So yep, the, the guy from Step up. Brothers, maybe, maybe you've seen Step Brothers. He's been in a bunch of other movies too. Yep. The stars came out, so. Yep, so here we are, we're at the airport. Everybody's a little bit nervous, right? And we're gonna take off. Now, if you notice here, we left on Sunday and we arrived on Monday. Most flights going from the US over to UK or Europe will do an overnight flight. So we normally leave in the afternoon or early evening um, on one night. And then that means that when we wake up in the morning, um, the next day we will have arrived. So we usually have a really early arrival time the next day. So they feed you on the plane. I don't know if you've been on an international flight before, but they will feed you. They will provide you drinks and you have your own little like TV set with your plug can, you watch movies and all that kind of stuff is free is included on an, on an international flight. Um, the flight time, John, six hours, six, seven, yep. was it and seven over, yeah. And, and just in case you've never been on a plane, it is impossible to sleep on a plane these days. So keep that in mind. I actually withheld sleep, hoping that it would make me sleep on the plane. And that was a dumb idea. <laughs> and that, my friends, was dumb. So and a lot of people can't sleep anyway, um, just because oh, yeah. they're excited. Um, we always say it over the students that when we arrive, we're not going to like, you're going to want to try and take a nap during that first day. But in order to kind of avoid the jet lag, chop, chop, we keep you moving that whole first day so that you do get a really good night's sleep that very first night. Um, and then you start to get over that. Uh, so it's trying to, trying to sleep. Maybe some of you are good sleepers. I'm not a good plane sleeper. So I'm always kind of a zombie the next day, but that's okay. So we arrived Monday morning, like six, 630 in the morning. That means that we are now in the airport in London. We arrive in Heathrow mostly, which is like their O'Hare, like one of their biggest airports. Uh, we arrive and then we have to go through and have our passports checked and pick up our luggage. Um, and then from there, we hop on the train because we want our students to learn how to use public transportation. Could we get a big 
bus that comes and picks us up and drops us off in places? Yeah, we could. But in real life, if you guys ever travel again, you're probably not going to get on a big chartered bus that's going to take you places. So we want to teach you how to use the subway system and public transportation. It's a little overwhelming. I will be honest, like grabbing your bags and John and I had, how many students did we have? As you can see them on there, we all have our bags. We're dragging everybody, come on, let's hop on the subway. And we all hop on the subway with our bags. Uh, and then we get down to London. And from the airport to London is about a 45 minute um, train ride. So we hopped on that. Um, and then we had the first day for us to just explore London. We end up staying in a hostel um, and not like creepy, like scary movie hostel, but a really nice hostel um, in London. We don't have the highest caliber of um, <clears throat> lodging, especially in big cities, because it's really expensive. All you need is a bed, right? And it's clean, there's food there, they provide your breakfast, and you've got a place to sleep. And really, if you're in a big city, it's first time traveling, you know, you're not going to want to spend a lot of time in the hostel anyway. So um, are they the fanciest places? No, but are they safe and are they clean? Absolutely. So the, the hostel in Edinburgh was awesome. There yeah. was a bar downstairs and pool tables and everyone was hanging out. It was, I was blown away. It was awesome. Yeah. So we do have the first day, like I said, your people were a little bit zombie-like, but it was like, all right, we're going to keep moving. So everybody was excited, obviously, anyway. So we have some pictures here, John, do you want to walk through? Yeah. So I, I put in some of the things that are like must do's in London, right? So you need to have your picture taken by the telephone booths, double-decker buses, Big Ben, which was kind of lacking in excitement. You see all that scaffolding all over it. Big Ben was not beautiful that day. <laughs> not that day it was. Um, you are allowed to go do what you want. This was our one of our free days. And so some students felt more comfortable hanging out with me and John. And I have like my little tour that I take kids on to get them kind of situated in London. And we go to Buckingham Palace and then we go take a walk and we come down by um, Big Ben, like John said. And we just kind of walk around the city to kind of get our bearings because, you know, you do want your pictures in front of Buckingham Palace and you want your picture down by Big Ben. And um, and it's a way to help orient the students. Some folks felt more comfortable just being by themselves and they had done their homework and they were ready to go on their own. So we let them do that as well. So I think you just need to figure out what your comfort level is. The faculty are there for you and to help you. So um, don't think that you're going to just get dumped and been like, good luck. <laughs> we're there to help you get situated as well. So lots to see in London. We could spend a whole 10 days in London, but we have things to do, right? Uh, so here we are again. John, were there other things you want to? Yeah, so this was the Harry Potter store, which oh. the students were super excited about. They did a Harry Potter tour on their own where you get to go to a lot of the sites from the movie. Um, this is the umbrella shop where the umbrella from uh, Mary Poppins came from. Um, and then we went to a Gordon Ramsay restaurant, which was so cool and had a picnic in the park with some amazing special food that we found while exploring. So it's, I mean, it's, I am excited for us to go back. I dream about this trip all the time. <laughs> yep. Um, so then Tuesday, okay. So Monday we've been running out, around like crazy. We are like zombies by the time we were at that Gordon Ramsay restaurant. Then it's time to go home, go to bed. Up the next day, we had the morning. Um, that's a little bit of free time in the morning. Breakfasts are usually included when we're at the hostels or the hotels or whatever, so you don't have to worry about that. Then we packed our stuff up, hopped back on the train and got to King's Cross Station. And if you know Harry Potter and if you're a Harry Potter fan, that's where platform nine and three quarters is. There's a little photo op in the King's Cross Station that you can go look at. There's a little gift shop there as well. Um, but this is the inside of what that, that looks like. It's really pretty. And then we all hop on the train and then we head up to Grantham. So it's about an hour or so um, from London up there. So was it, well, there's your pasty. Yeah, got to eat some local cuisine people, yep. hand pies. Yep. And I will say something about the food. I would strongly encourage students to always try stuff that's different. And if it, for you, it's just, I wanna look at the different candy and chips because I do love candy and chips and I like trying candy and chips everywhere. Um, 
I, I have had students that just ate chicken nuggets every single day. That's true. <laughs> and if that's what you want to do, I'm not here to judge. But I would also encourage you to try things like these pasties. And if you've been to Mineral Point, for heaven's sakes, you've had stuff like that, right? That's where they come from, right? Is, is, is from Cornwall and from that area. So I encourage you to try different things. And then this is an example of what it looks like on the train. The trains are really nice. Um, there are some little four pieces there that you can sit there and play cards. We played a lot of cards um, because we travel on train a lot, but there we are on the train. Um, and then we arrive at Harlexton Manor. So like for us, some, depending on where you go, you will have maybe a home base or something. This was our home base. And I know we're roughing it. It feels like you're like a Disney princess or something like that. But this is owned by the University of Evansville in Indiana. It's their study abroad site. And yet they allow other outside universities to use their space as well. And we have gone there now for, four years. Um, and I don't know, I've been there so many times, I still get excited because we come, you arrive at the train station in Grantham and you hop on a bus and they come pick us up and you're just kind of driving through the countryside. And then you look over to the left and it's like, oh my gosh, there's a huge manor house there. And that's where I'm going to be staying. So, um, but it is, do you remember how many acres it is, John? I don't, it's a huge property though. Cause we took a hike one day and it takes you know, an hour maybe to walk all the trails just around the forest. Yeah. So there's a big garden in the back or whatever, and the, the, the grounds are just yours to explore. And the inside is just as beautiful as the outside. So on that day, we've arrived from London, we're getting situated here. Um, and we just let kids have an opportunity to explore and look, as you can imagine, the how the big manor house is kind of essentially yours for the time that you stay there. So running up and down the cedar staircase and trying to find the hidden doorways and panels, um, going out in the garden, there's a bluebell field, et cetera. It's lovely. Um, and don't forget so, that there's a ballroom, Jen. And every day you could find me down there in my blue ball gown, just like Belle from Beauty and the Beast. It was amazing. Spinning about, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, here's some examples of the food and they have like a cafeteria and so we go down and eat in the cafeteria other, every day um, and so here's some examples John took some examples of some of the food that we had um, at I loved it. yeah and then we got up the next morning for us because we were in education we went over to hunting tower they're kind of like our partner friend school in, in the small town of Grantham um, I think one of the things kids like about this place is that it feels different enough, but it's also still kind of a small town and where Harlexton is situated is kind of, it's out in a field. Um, and so it feels rather rural and kind of like home Wisconsin-like, um, but it, of course it's also very different. So we always go and have a tour of the school. And so the students get an opportunity to go poke their heads in classrooms and the students are all in their little uniforms and they get to talk to the students a little bit. So um, it's a day that we get to spend in the school. Oh my God, I didn't even realize that was an I Need a Wee book. <laughs> so one of the best parts about this, if you're not an education major, and I would still suggest doing the course, even if you're not, you get an hour of just interviewing kids. And Jen has the sheet that she has that has American terms that they don't use, and then English terms that we don't use, and you get to have a conversation. And the kids are just priceless. It's one of the coolest experiences. Yeah. So things like, you know, we ask them, you know, a, a zebra crossing, you know, what is that? Well, they think it's hilarious that we call it a crosswalk, right? And they call it a zebra crossing. And they're always just like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> why would you call it that? That's so, <laughs> that's so ridiculous. You know, a sweater is a jumper, right? And so just having the conversations and you're doing it with like elementary school kids. So they're tickled, number one, because you're American and you're different, right? And they want to know if you've been to New York and if you've been to Disneyland and do you have a gun? I think those are like the three questions. <laughs> I begin All that, Americans so. have guns. Yes, that's right, exactly. So we spend some time in the school. Um, and then we also, I like to always feel like we're tying the culture into what we're doing academically. And so we always go to Teaspoon Tea Company um, and we go have a proper cup of tea and we learn how to have tea with them. So we, that's included in the price of this. So we buy a whole bunch of snacks, so scones, et cetera. And everybody gets to choose a tea that they wanna have and they show you how to pour the tea. And here we are like cheering together. So it's also an opportunity to get down into the town. Um, and kind of get yourself situated inside of Grantham. So that was our Wednesday. 
Thursday, we were supposed to go visit another school, but things change, right? And so we ended up having essentially kind of a free day. And so we said to students, you get a rail pass, which means you can go anywhere in the UK. It's all included um, for those eight days uh, that we have the pass. And so we had an extra day. So we figured, why don't we, has anyone ever been to Dover? No? Okay. So we decided that as a group, um, we would go to Dover. And actually we let people choose. And John and I just said, we're going to go to Dover. If you guys want to come with, I'd never seen the white cliffs of Dover. Um, and so I was like, that's a place I've always wanted to go. And everybody was like, all right. So we did some hiking that day. That was really fun. It was an over unexpected, like kind of gift in the fact that we hadn't been there before but we all went uh it's got to see the english channel and walk around dover and here we are there i am strategically placing my pete over the edge <laughs> there's pete clean running off the cliffs of dover there we are again there's the english channel there behind us um and so we we honestly hopped on the train sat for about an hour hopped off spent the day in dover hopped back on and came back for the day so tick another tick off the list uh friday we said decided to go to lincoln so that's home of lincoln cathedral it's home of one of the uh original copies and original remaining copies of the uh, magna carta is there as well it's one a beautiful cathedral and there's also a castle there as well so john took some pictures from both i think the bottom picture right john is from the castle overlooking the mm -hmm cathedral um and so lincoln has a place called steep hill and it is named appropriately because it is very steep um and so that was a free day so we just kind of let people be loose they kind of ran around they did some shopping we went and saw the cathedral together and and the castle together and then people kind of ran off and did their own thing and bought lunch etc cetera, etc cetera. so good mix of free time and we had some students that wanted to hang around with us they hung around with us so it's it's up to whatever you want to do um, so that was Friday. Saturday, we ended up going to Cambridge. Um, so John, do you want to talk about our, our biology day? Yeah, we went to the Natural History Museum that was there, which was really neat. And then we also went to the Eagle, which was the hangout for, you know, the people that discovered the structure of DNA, you know, this minor discovery. Um, and we got to see some cool things in Cambridge that morning. And then I believe in the afternoon, next slide mm -hmm. we went punting oh my goodness and this dreamy guy would tell jokes and tell us all about cambridge while we went down the canal um, it was a really cool experience and i think jen you usually do this as part of the trip right yep yeah we just try and pull out things that are kind of unique to where we're going punting is famous in cambridge and so big flat boats with the guys on the poles so they just pull us through and then they tell you stories and is it kind of corny? Yeah, but it's also we have fun every time we do it. So it's fun. Um, you want to just keep talking about Cambridge? Oh, yeah. And we also went to the American Cemetery. That's World War Two, one, mm -hmm. I forget two. Yeah, it's two. Yeah. And that was and we got to watch a, a flag lowering ceremony, which was really cool and meaningful. Mm -hmm. So that was our Saturday. And then Sunday, you know, we run you guys. I feel like you're paying good money and we're only there a short time. So it's like every day we are doing something and going somewhere else. We needed a break day. So there is a day that we have worked in there every single time where you can have a free day where we stay. There's a bike path. So John and I hopped on the bikes and pedaled down to the Dirty Duck, which is sits down by the canal here. And we had some adult beverages. And we had some fish and chips and it was just, it was a beautiful day and there was live music there. And we just had, it was, a, it was fun. It was one of the best days of my life. It was really <laughs> special. It really was, it was so yeah. cool. We had a good time that day. Yeah, some of the students came with us. Some of them met us later. Some of them decided just to stay home and relax and lay in their beds and get some laundry done. So you do you. Um, Monday, we ended up going back to Grantham and we went to, a, we wanted to see a different kinds of schools. So we kind of like saw a public school and then we also saw this private um, school as well. This is an all boys school and this is the school that Isaac Newton attended. So if you are, have a science background. Um, yeah, and John has a picture, yeah, where he scratched his name. That's real. Yeah, um, it, it was in one of the windowsills where Newton scratched his name. Yep. 
So we went there, um, had a talk with the, the headmaster there as well. Um, and then, let's see. Yep. And then we went to, uh, what was it? Kesteven, Kesteven school. Yep. So, and this was an all girls school. So we wanted to see an all boys kind of poshy posh school and an all girls poshy posh kind of school and see the difference between them. So that was kind of interesting as well. Um, and that and was then, the school <laughs> that Margaret Thatcher went to. Yes, who was former prime the minister. Prime minister. Yep. And then that night, I'm going to let John talk about amazing. So, actually, two different nights we got to go out after dark on the grounds, and there are two species of newts that are at the pond that's right next to the building and huge snails and toads and frogs. We just saw, it was amazing all the stuff we saw at night outside. And I think the students just really liked exploring and squealing at everything they saw. And um, it was just so much fun. Yep. Um, then on Tuesday, we left for Edinburgh. So we have like two big cities this time on either end of our trip. Um, so we want to make sure you get to England and also you get to Scotland. Scotland for, comes back every single time as the top place that, that students love as part of the entire experience. So we spend a few days in Edinburgh. In the second picture over, there is a Scotch whiskey tour. And even if you're not a person who, who drinks or um, enjoys Scotch or anything, and a lot of the college students don't enjoy it, but it is such a part of their culture. It's a really fun experience. You sit in a barrel and they take you through this entire thing. And so it's, it's one of the fun things that we do together, eating, walking around, obviously getting to see the bag pipe pipers or whatever. And so that was a free day in Edinburgh. Um, and eating haggis. Oh yes. And then there's some haggis there. Oh yeah. On the left, mm -hmm. top left. Um, Wednesday, we go up to Edinburgh Castle. If you don't know much about Edinburgh, it's built, built up on the top of a hill. And so at the very top is the castle. And so um, it's an opportunity to kind of like tromp around there. Aren't there. The crown jewels are there as well. So you can run in and see the crown jewels. Um, it also gives you a pretty cool view of the city from there. Oh, um, and in the background, you can see Arthur's seat in the distance on the yeah, left. If you look, yeah, if you look over on the the far left over there, there's like a hill over there and that's called Arthur's Seat. The rest of the Wednesday is free for students. We did get together and have dinner together, but that was optional. And then Thursday, for those of you who like to be outside and get some hiking done, you can climb to the top of that big hill, which is called Arthur's Seat. Um, and there's very there's variations of how far, you, if, you want to, if you want something more strenuous, you can keep going up. If you're not, if you just want to be kind of chill, you can. And then we just do something active as well. So um, there's pictures from the top of Arthur's Seat. And then Friday, we hop back on the plane, came home. Uh, we leave in the morning and it's weird, like going over, we go overnight and we come back, we leave at nine in the morning and are back by one in the afternoon because of the time change. So it's like, it's only like a two hour flight, not really, but it feels like that, maybe. And then it was over, um, which makes me so sad because as John said, it just, it goes by way too fast. It goes by way too fast. So um, that's an example of what we did. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any specific questions that you wanna ask us, or you wanna ask, you've got me here as well as Katie, um, anything that we can help sort out for you, questions. And, and there's nothing like, if you don't know, you don't know. So I'd rather have you guys ask if you have any kind of questions about um even if it's not our trip but in general so yeah please ask any questions you can unmute yourself and ask or you can put it in the chat if you don't feel like talking um also i know there were some questions in canvas um a lot of them were general educational broad questions but we can gear them toward short-term faculty led a little bit and kind of answer that way um because i know i answered them kind of generally for education broad in general um but we can talk about short-term faculty led too Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so like, obviously like, well, I went to Italy in high school and like that was like more um, guided tour, I guess. So like this isn't like that, right? It's like more of like, just like the faculty like takes you places. Yeah. I think it, yeah, Amber, depending on who who is in charge of that trip, I think that there can be some variation there, but it's not like you're, if you're saying like, am I like on a tour bus and then I'm off a tour bus and on and off and on and off? Probably not because you're doing, there is some kind of like content 
academic connection to what you're doing. So it's less, it is still like a quote unquote trip, but it's also an academic trip, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so if you're like on egg, you're, you know, if you're doing one of the egg ones, you're probably out on several different farms, right? In different places. So you're still having that kind of experience of feeling like a tourist, but you're also the student that gets to do some more academic stuff, yeah. right? Okay. And for all of the courses, one of the major outcomes is just exposure to different cultures. And though it may be specific for your content area, there is a huge thick layer, which is thinking about who you're interacting with and how they live. And it makes you see your life in a very different way when you're abroad. So that's, and that's why I say, you know, we always want it to fit with our major, but it doesn't need to find a place that looks cool and get some upper level credits or some gen eds out of the way and, and have fun and learn some things. Awesome. Um, there's a question in the chat from Joey, um, he asked, if the trip goes to Europe, is it the same basically every year or are there different trips in Europe? I can let you guys answer that, Renee. Yeah, so Joey, I will speak specifically for ours. This was like the fourth time. Um, every time we go, we do something a little bit different, but for the most part, we're housed at Harlixton. We visit London and Edinburgh. Those things stay constant. The places we go in between like we went to Dover, we went to Lincoln, um, those Cambridge, those change every single year just because, I don't know, I like to mix it up a little bit. And then the students haven't been to any of these places. So if we find something that's kind of cool that we want to go visit um, a different town, we mix that up. Um, Some and students are there different went to Paris. Oh, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. On our free day, yeah, the free day in London, some folks chose to take the channel and they went over to Paris for a day and came back. That was extra, but they wanted to do that. And mm -hmm. that was on their, their list. Was it hectic and crazy? Yep. But did they get to go to, to, to Paris? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And are there different trips in Europe? Joey, the answer is it, it depends on who the faculty are and what they're proposing. So it might change. There are some that are pretty consistent, right? Yeah, so there's history of science. History, science of technology, um, that one, it's, it varies because they go to different countries every year. So they plan a little bit different with that. We do have some engineering programs that cycling in the Netherlands as well. That's very specific for that. But again, they go to different places. Um, others do change around. So they like to try a few things here and there. So it, it just depends on the faculty, what they're looking to do. Um, even though it's the same country, but they might be going to different places. Like for example, I know Dr. Samir O'Malley, he does his Germany trip for mechanical and or for all engineering, but one year he decided he had connections for BMW plant. So they actually got the tour of BMW plant there. So it, it does vary changes. It just depends on who's available, what connections they have, what they can do during that time. So uh, even though it may be the same type of trip, but the overall experience can be different from year to year. Yeah, and typically the short-term faculty-led um, options can change from year to year. There are programs like GENS or like the history, um, the history one that uh, Dr. Stanley does uh, goes generally like every year or so, or they like try to. Um, so there are some that like repeat, but have differences like they mentioned, but um, there are new ones that pop up every year. Um, yeah, so. And yeah, and we sometimes, were, oh, go ahead. Well, sometimes I know students are concerned about language barriers with study abroad and people speak English all over the world. It really is there. I have traveled many places around the world and you can always find people that speak English. And so yeah. don't treat that as your only barrier. I mean, don't use that as a huge barrier for study abroad. You're gonna be able to speak English wherever you go. Right, and for short term faculty led, like you're with other people um, to kind of go offhand on like other education abroad options as far as like semester or summer where it's not like short term faculty led, you're kind of doing your own thing more so. Um, like if you wanted to study in Spain for the summer or for a semester, you can take courses in English. You, you um, for certain like language courses, you may have like requirements um, or have to test into certain levels if you're doing that. But there are courses, typically most countries and most programs have options in English. 
So is it good to have some background sometimes to get around in certain countries? Yes, but you can go without, like it's not a huge barrier. And we're trying to expand just so if you wanna keep, I don't know where you guys are if you're first year, second year um, <clears throat> students, but we're trying to expl expand this Harlexton. John was kind of like our guinea pig and like having, having a group that's kind of like focused on one area like education, but then he brought along biology students. We did things together that was similar, similar things. And my students benefited from his stuff and his students benefited from ours. We're, we're looking at expanding that and including um, uh, some gen ed classes in the future as well that would do some on-site like here coursework at the beginning of the summer with the study abroad experience being at the end. It's kind of like the application piece as well. Um, and we've had some interest from English in doing that, from our bi friends in biology in doing that. And so health and human performance has, has had an interest in that as well. So we're trying to find ways to expand the experience. But I also wanna say to John's point, every year that we have gone, I've taken students that are biology majors, that are uh, professional writing majors, that are English majors, that really don't have anything they don't need the class for education, but they've always wanted to go to the UK and they wanted to have that experience and they were interested enough and willing enough to go do some of the, the education pieces, which were interesting, I think. Um, so don't, don't let the fact that, oh, it looks like it's a teaching class or it looks like it's just a biology class. Just double check and see if maybe it's the place you've always wanted to go your whole life and this is the way that you can um, have that experience and also learn some different content as well. So. I'd encourage you to do that. Any other questions anyone has right at the moment? Otherwise, I can kind of go to uh, the Canvas questions. Um, one was asking about how things would look different for branch campus students. Um, and so for branch campus students, they're considered Platteville students, so the um, process is very similar or the same. Um, I do want to note that non-Platteville students can go on short-term faculty-led um, programs. Um, they can also go on our UW-Platteville EA programs as well. But um, so if you have a friend that goes to a different school, it's possible for them to also go on the trip. They just have, we have to work to improve it with um, their school and make sure that they're able to get credit. Um, so that is a thing. A uh, question from the chat is, what is the likelihood of this trip happening with COVID? <laughs> Christian, don't say COVID. Um, uh, Harlingston is essentially, um, this specific trip is not going next summer. And that's just because if, if for some reason we went and a student were to get sick, we have nowhere to quarantine them. And then you'd the, if a student would have to quarantine themselves and pay out of pocket, and it just is, is not worth the risk. 2022 is when, I know, which seems like a lifetime away, but 2022 is 100%, as long as COVID's gone, um, that we will be going back then. Uh, and so hopefully things will be back to normal then. So I would plan I do, to yeah, I do want to comment on that as far as right now, <clears throat> we are planning for spring um, 2021 to be going at this moment. Um, that could change the official decision has not been made. Um, and so starting in spring 2021 and summer 21, there's still possibilities of studying abroad. Um, it's just a little uncertain with COVID. So because of how fluid the situation is, it can change. Um, but I know a lot of people are talking next fall looks a lot better for students to go like more easily um, due to COVID, so. Good question. Um, another question from Canvas was asking when students should start seriously considering study abroad during their undergraduate career. Um, for general study abroad, I would say as early as possible to kind of plan it out and make sure it fits in with your academic plan. Um, I do think that short-term faculty led is easier to fit in because it's usually during breaks and a lot of them can count for like general courses or some major courses depending on the trip. I don't know if you guys have anything more to say to that, me or John or Jen. Um, with, with COVID situation, I just want to go back to that really quick. Is yeah, that yeah. We are planning on doing maybe some virtual um, 
study abroad experience where that's a good possibility. So you don't necessarily may not have to travel, but it's a good way for you to get maybe some personal insight on certain subjects. Cause that's, that's an option that we are currently working with and trying to plan with uh, so that maybe you get, maybe not get the hand experience, but at least the course material will be there. It'll be very important for your studies or for your major type that we are looking into. So that could be an option for, um, future wise as well too, in case you are not able to travel uh, as well, because maybe you have a little one uh, like I do, um, can't travel as much anymore, um, but still be able to participate in some sort of study abroad experience. So that's going to be something that we are hoping to work with and continue with and hoping me to offer that type of option for all students, at least one type of option that's going to be like an online study abroad virtual course. Um, me, would you want to speak a little bit about the requirements for applying as far as like GPA or academic requirements? Yeah, so with the requirements for, for short-term faculty-led, it's sure. faculty generally may uh, have a, a certain GPA they may be looking at, but generally mostly if you have a GPA requirement of 2.25, generally is, is, is RN on our particular program so you can definitely go on each one but again it's important to, to talk with the faculty because for some courses they may have prerequisite courses so for example if you're an engineer engineer major uh, there's a trip that goes to uh, the program that goes to the Netherlands of cycling you need to have some prerequisite engineering courses in order to do that particular program um, so again, I really advise to speak with fact to speak with the faculty if there's something that you are willing uh, and wanting to do. So again, faculty are very open to having any type of students come, but they're just going to be like, well, just let you know there's going to be some courses that might be a little tougher, but if you're willing to go through it and do it, they're perfectly happy to have you on board as well. So. Um, so yeah, for, for GPA purposes, generally for us is 2.25. Um, we generally ask for one recommendation from another faculty members. Um, so sometimes you may ask for two recommendations, one from your advisor, one for another faculty. Um, so we try to keep it as, the nice thing about short-term faculty, we try to keep it as open. So it's something for students to really highly consider. Um, so there's not a, a lot of areas which you're not required not to be able to go, so. Great, thank you, Neem. Um, okay, we have a few minutes left here. Are there any last minute questions that we can answer for you? Um, you can also um, enter them in Canvas and I'll try to keep checking that to answer them and Neem can answer them as well. Otherwise, you can definitely reach out to our office um, or to us personally. You could reach out to Jen or John as well, I'm sure, and they'd help point you in the right direction. Um, but if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, if you have any last ones right now, please ask them. I have a question about like trips within the states. I know the biology department had one planned like two years ago. I didn't know if you guys facilitate those or if that's something we'd have to go to the faculty about if they're doing them this year. Well, I can speak to biology because I'm biology. Um, there are pretty regularly we have biology trips. I don't know when the next one will be able to go because of COVID. Um, but that's something that you'd want to talk to the folks in biology about. It's not done through study abroad. Yeah, the domestic trips like that are more department specific and they work on that. We, we don't usually have that. Okay. And a lot of departments do um, regional and national trips. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Geography does a really cool one where they go in a different direction it seems every year and I don't I don't know if that's going this summer either um, and I do a regional amphibians and reptiles course but we did a virtual version where people explored where they lived this summer which was kind of fun for people yeah all right well I want to thank you Jen and John for um, coming and being here and presenting for us and showing your awesome trip um, hopefully we can get this trip going in 2022 and look forward to that. Um, hopefully study abroad can start back um, 
really soon. Um, but thank you all for attending and thank you to the students as well. Um, yeah, thanks so much. Yep, thanks for coming guys. Thank you. Thank you.